This is the five tech things you should know about episode number 56 for September 17th, 2010, brought to you by Mosey.com. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here, www.tvazine.com in association with geekazine.com. Found over on blip.tv, found over on vodpod, found over on techpodcast.tv. If it's tech and it's video, then it's here. Child safe and friendly show, so bring the kids on down, have them sit down and find out a little bit about technology so they can get into what's happening in the future. Or even right now. Yes, I am going to Blog World New Media Expo. It is October 14th through the 16th. It is in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's a great time. If you're a blogger, a podcaster, a videocaster, you need to think about going. I'm going to be doing a session with Mignon Fogarty from The Grammar Girl. We're going to be talking about expirable versus evergreen content. Should be a lot of fun. There's a lot of great sessions out there. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff out there, and you'll find out about a lot of cool products, and you'll meet industry professionals. They'll teach you the the ropes so you can make a better blog, you can make a better podcast, you can make a better video cast. If you're in this space, you need to be there. Go over to geekazine.com, click on the link that'll take you to Blog World Expo. Sign up now so you can get to Blog World New Media Expo in October. It's only a month away, folks. Remember that code? Geek. 10% off, $4.95 a month to back up now, back up often, back up offsite. I've been saying it, mosey.com. Back up your pictures, back up your documents, back up your life online over at mosey.com. $4.95 a month per computer. It's the price of a hard drive per year. You use that code geek, you're going to get an additional 10% off that already low price. So back up now, back up often, back up off-site with mosey.com. All right, folks, let's get into the content here. Number five, we're talking about Twitter. Of course, on Tuesday... Twitter launched a brand new version of Twitter. The Twitter watch uh, for me is I'm still waiting for Twitter. But if you thought, well, I'll just create a new account and I'll get the new Twitter. No, you're going to have to wait there too. I already tried it, folks, just for you. Now, basically what's happening is that Twitter has revamped their design on their web page so people go to the web page a little bit more. You still have the 140 characters, what are you doing? But now you can expand it and it brings it over to the other page which will show you the, the articles, which will show you the tweets, which will show you the pictures, which will show you the videos and everything else you need to know. It's a new part of the API. If you're using your phone to do all your tweeting, uh, you might not see it depending on if the companies like uh, TweetDeck and, and, uh, and Twirl and stuff like that decided to actually put it into their APIs. But it's just an advance bringing more people over to Twitter it's not a Facebook killer. It's not anything more than just an addition to Twitter. Be very excited to actually see what happens in the, the page once I get it. But when I get it, it should be a lot of fun. And I'll, I'll probably use Twitter. I'll probably use the page a little bit more. Um, but I'll probably use, mostly use Twitter through my phone anyway. So. Dell's coming out with a brand new laptop. It's called the Dell Duo. It's an Atom Duo processor at 1.5 gigahertz and runs DDR3 RAM. That might mean absolutely nothing to you, but what it does do is it's a laptop that the screen flips and becomes a tablet. We've seen those before. It's nothing new there, but it's running an Atom processor. It's running a tablet. The best part about this thing, if the weight is pretty low, the best part about this thing is it'll have all the functionality of a laptop in a tablet. This is the one thing that I've always wanted in a tablet, so I'm very interested in seeing this. Now we've seen a different type of laptop to uh, tablet configurations. For instance, Lenovo came out with a laptop that you detach the screen and that became a tablet. The only problem with that device was the fact that once you detached it, it wouldn't stay in Windows 7. It would actually flip over to an Android-based tablet. You couldn't do the same stuff there. You couldn't just uh, move on from there, and you put it back in, and all of a sudden it's back to Windows 7. With this one, it's running Windows 7, which means that you'll probably be able to do almost exactly the same stuff when you turn it into the tablet as you do as the desktop. Of course, high-process power stuff, not as much so. But the one advantage to this tablet 
it's running a dual core Atom processor, but nonetheless a dual core processor. Still not as fast as I'd really like it to be. And we talked about that last week with the Cortex A9 and the A15. That's coming very quick. In the next six months, a tablet with a quad core processor is very possible. In the meantime, I might think about getting a tablet like this for CES. Because it'll be a laptop, flip it over, it'll be a tablet. One small design question I have for Dell, of course these devices aren't out just yet, is the way that the screen flips. A lot of small little pieces that could break really easily. If they have a way to understand how to fix that nut so that's not a problem, hey, then I might just be getting myself a Dell Duo once it comes out for CES. All right, if you've owned or rented a home, you might have seen older plugs. You have to change them out for three-prong grounded plugs, or maybe you didn't have to worry about that at all, and everything was three-prong grounded plugs. Actually, very, very, very easy process. Did it myself in a couple houses. Well, now they have a brand new plug where it even expands more power options. So I can plug in my iPhone, I can plug in my iPad, I can plug in my, my cameras, I can plug in my USB fan. If it's a 5 volt, about 2.4 amp device, I'll be able to use the USB plug in these three prong plug devices. They're only about $20 a, a socket, so it's actually very, very affordable to get one of these things to place up in your living room, place up in your kitchen, so you can plug in your devices and get going with life and not have to worry about where that little wall wart is, so you can plug the wall wart in and plug in your iPhone from there. So. Pretty cool stuff. I can't wait to get one myself. I'm going to be looking at it online in the next couple days and actually put it into the living room. And I'll show you how I do that process down the road. Yahoo is going to be going through some revamps. They're going to be changing their email going into beta. Now, we've seen Google doing some major changes with their email. Hotmail has been doing some major changes, so it's time for Yahoo to do that. I thought about a year ago Yahoo would start boxing everything up and selling it left and right. But they're sticking around with some of these things like the email, which is pretty cool. Some problems I've always had with Yahoo email. The first thing was when I said something was junk, it would then say, okay, it's junk, and then just kind of forget it. And then all of a sudden that same email message would show up again the next day or the next week back in my inbox. There was never really a good junk filter on it. So hopefully they'll fix that. The second thing is the ads. They were way too inundative. Knock it down a little bit. Yeah, you need advertisements on it, but they don't need to be shoved in your face to read your email. Finally, the last part about Yahoo, it's the same problem I have with Hotmail. you got to pay for you to be able to port that stuff over to an Outlook client, to a, uh, to a Thunderbird client, anything that's an external type of email catcher. I like to put all my stuff into an email folder like that so I can back it up on my own so it doesn't have to inundate on those servers. I can clean off those servers. I can control my own content. I can't do that unless I pay a price per year, and I don't like that. Hopefully Yahoo has looked into that and decided that it's time for that thing to go because not too many people pull their email off to save it. I do that for very specific reasons because I'm a control freak. That's pretty much it. So. Another cool thing that Yahoo is doing is they're working with a company called Connected TV to create widgeted TV. Now, that's over in Europe. Not happening in the United States just yet, but uh, maybe very, very soon. So there'll be about 40 widgeted apps that they're going to try to get to you um, over in Europe. So good job, guys, and maybe we'll get some Yahoo TV coming up in the United States very soon. In the meantime, Yahoo looks like they're back on a track. They're not totally solidified, so I'm just uh, watching to see what they're going to do. But they're on a good track to get things back up and running into Yahoo land. All right, picture this. You're walking down the street. All of a sudden, somebody runs by and rips off your T-shirt, rips off your regular shirt. What are you going to do? Well, how about Fabrican? You can spray it back on. You think I'm kidding, but ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Manuel Torres has developed Fabricant, which is a cotton polyester-based fabric that you can spray on your body and turn into a t-shirt. Turn into whatever design you want. You get different cans, and just like paint, 
you, you get different cans to spray on different stuff, so you have different patterns, different cool uh, ideas on your shirt. It dries, you take off the shirt, you throw it in the wash, you clean it, you know, dry it, you put it back on, and you're out the door again. Will it shrink? That's the real question right there. But of course, this is all tight fitting shirts anyway, because it conforms to your body. Now there's a lot of people that really, really like this. I really like this idea. I have a friend who actually does full out body painting and she might even get into doing fabric can painting because it's, yeah, it looks pretty cool. For 10 to $15 a can, it might get a little bit expensive, but then again, the shirt costs 10, 15, 25, $60, depending on the shirt. So would you spray a shirt on you? And of course, that's the five tech things that you should know about. My name is Jeffrey Powers. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, if you want to see anything change, let me know. Just give me a call over at 608-205-4378 or geekazine at gmail.com for the email address. For the five tech things you should know about, my name is Jeffrey Powers. Until next week, you guys have a safe one and take care.